Hi, my name is Ellen. I am from Melbourne, Australia. Today I want to talk to you about my journey to Islam uh, from Catholic. So um, today I'll talk to you about how did I get introduced to Islam in the first place and what made me want to read the Quran. Um, what did I discover when I was reading the Quran, comparing that with my knowledge that I and my beliefs of, of being Catholic and then that conversion process of speaking with my parents and my priest um, and how has it changed my life? Um, lifestyle wise, what have I had to change? What have I got to do now? Um, what do I want to do now? Um, so um, <laughs> I'm giggling because a lot of the, the Muslims will know it's, uh, um, it's something we actually want to do, whereas um, yeah, my parents are saying to me, oh, you've got to do this now and you've got to do that. No, I really want to. I really want to. Um, but I want to start with um, how did I, wh why am I actually making this video in the first place? Um, as an Australian and growing up in a society, for me, my lifestyle growing up was not a multicultural environment. So the knowledge that we had and the understandings I was taught growing up of um, Islam is simply that of um, what's in the media, so the terrorism and the oppression, um, which is clearly not actually true at all. So there's a lot of um, Australians that still don't actually know what is the Quran and and that's really, really heartbreaking that they haven't actually had a, um, a chance to actually question it for themselves, look at it for themselves um, and make their own mind up rather than just uh, ignoring it because of the, the media. I do feel in Australia we have this expectation or the, this understanding that it, it's the Islam, the Muslims is just for the Arabs. It's got nothing to do with me. You know, I'm, I'm an Aussie and I'm, I'm Catholic, I'm Christian, and that's that. Um, but with those blinkers on, we're missing out on so much. Um, so I just want to open the door a little bit. Um, it can either help uh, the, the Christians and the Catholics in Australia to just feel a little bit more comfortable to know a little bit about Islam, to know that it is actually a religion of peace. Um, and they, they are doing what they are doing because they want to um, serve God with, with love um, and there, there is no oppression. Everyone's actually very grateful for everything that they have in their life and, and um, it, just to create a little bit more understanding about the religion and open the door. If you want to have a look at it yourself, then, you know, have a look at it and decide for yourself. Um, read the Quran for yourself. And... Um, so how did I get introduced to Islam? Um, <laughs> um, so there was a boy. <laughs> um, I, my husband is, is Muslim. So um, at the time when we, when we were introduced and started dating, um, we obviously, I didn't know much about, about Muslim, um, Muslims, um, but I knew how much I loved this boy. So, um, oh man, <laughs> um, so at, over time, um, you know, I learned and, and, and realized as, as he, he had, had told me that uh, Islam is following the Bible and it's following um, Juda Judaism, the, the, the Torah. Those, those scriptures are, are well respected and, and must be um, adhered to in um, the, in the, in the Quran. So um, to know that they're so closely aligned, because I think to start with, I didn't know anything about Muslims and anything about Islam, and I, I didn't really want to know either. Um, so knowing that they're so closely aligned with their teachings, um, it wasn't difficult to live in harmony together. We had the same um, morals and um, code of ethics, um, the Ten Commandments, um, etc. Um, <laughs> so the main, obviously the main sticking point there is between Christianity and, and um, the um, Muslims is Jesus is, um, was he sent by God or is he God? Um, in, in the Quran, uh, Jesus is, is someone uh, that's sent by God as a, as a prophet, someone as a messenger to to prove to everyone, um, we as, as humans, we, we like to have a little bit of proof that, that there is a God just so we know we're 
we're putting our trust in the right spot. Um, and Jesus was sent to, to, to show us these proofs and teach us um, teach us the ways to live, teach us our moral codes. Um, so my husband did ask me, you know, do you believe that Jesus is sent by God or um, is God? And I said, no, he's sent by God. He's, he's not, I know we call him, you know, in the name of the Father and the Son, but when we say the Son of God, it's a figure of speech. It's um, that we are all sons and daughters of God. He is our Father in heaven. Because when Jesus came and he was preaching to us, he came telling us to worship our Father who art in heaven. Um, so everything to me about what Jesus was here to teach us was um, about how to worship uh, God in heaven. So did I believe, what, what did I believe? I always, always, always believed that Jesus was sent by God um, to teach us to worship God in heaven. Um, and yeah, at that point my husband was like, well, that's not what the Catholics believe. Catholics believe that he is God. I was like, no, we don't. Um, so yeah, that, that was, that was a little bit funny to me, but, um, my husband was teaching me apparently what the, what the Catholics believe, but it's something that's always been in my heart that, and I, I do believe that there's quite a lot of people out there that, that also have that con conflicting, um, feeling um, between who, who was Jesus and what was his purpose. Um, and that's the main sticking point or the main difference um, and a very, very important um, difference um, in, the, in the two religions. Um, so what actually made me read it, um, my husband and I had been together for 10 years. Um, he was always giving me little hints and little, you know, recommendations um, shall we say but no it was very much this is my lane and that's your lane and we've got our two separate religions um, I was very um, conscious that he uh, you know I've, I've got in the back of my mind these these upbringings and these um, expectations of he's going to try and convert you and he's going to try and dominate you so I really had my wall up on that to make sure that he, he wouldn't um, so he was actually getting more spiritual he was starting to read more and, and get closer to his faith. So at that stage, I realized I better up my game and um, start going back to church because I hadn't been to church for, um, for for a long time. So I started going back to church every week. Um, I started singing at church and I joined the finance committee um, because I really needed to ramp up um, on my end. Um, he was getting quite knowledgeable um, and quite confident in um, in in what he knew, and I needed to I needed to to match him. Um, so that's why I went back to church. And and at this stage, returning um, back to church in in my thirties, I'm and I and I'm there. Um, I'm there because I want to be there as well. Um, so I was listening now. I was really listening and really questioning and really, I was really enjoying, I was really enjoying it. Um, every week and, the, and the, the priest would give his homily, I'd really take something home from it. Um, so I was really enjoying my time. Um, and and I, I'd known now um, that from my husband that Islam, the, the difference there, well, what, what that is about is that there was another messenger after Jesus, which is Muhammad, peace be upon him. And his... Um, his miracle that he brought was the Quran. So the Quran itself is a book from God. They're actually God's words. And it says um, time and time again in the Quran, throughout the Quran, that Muhammad is simply the the channel. He's simply the channel and the messenger to, to write down these words. They're not his words. They're actually God's words. So I, I, I still, I had known this and, and my husband had told me this, but still I wanted to stay in my, my lane. Um, but there was a reading one week in church and it was a gospel from John and it's the gospel reading, I don't know the exact number, you can find it, it says that um, another messenger will come and he will bring words, but you are not ready for it now. And I thought, whoa, hold on, this is what my husband's been talking about all this time and it's actually in the Bible. Um, well, what's what's the priest going to say this week about that? Because clearly that's talking about Muhammad or what, what's, what's that going to be? What's he going to say? And the priest that week talked about, he interpreted that as the being the Holy Spirit. 
Now, this didn't make sense to me that the next messenger was the Holy Spirit and he's going to be bringing word. It, it didn't make sense to me um, because it's, it says you're, you're not ready for it now, so it will come later. But we do know that the Holy Spirit was, was there at the same time as Jesus. Um, he was there at the, the Baptist, uh, St. John the Baptist. So um, it didn't make sense to me and it really made me so, but, but, but what if? What if, like I, I still really in my heart, I wanted to stay, I didn't want to be Muslim and I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to change teams, but, um, but what if, and, and that was a really big important question because what if Jesus really has told us that Muhammad's coming with, with God's words, but you're just not ready for it now. What if that is actually telling us that, that this is happening what if it wasn't about that it, it, it could be the Holy Spirit but what if it, it, it was the Quran they're all saying there's billions of Muslims and they're all saying it so what if I, 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 I had to question it for myself and at that stage that's when I wanted to explore the what if we will all have our judgment day and and what's really difficult in this journey is going against the grain going against what your mother and father have taught you, going against what you've been brought up, um, all of the Catholic schooling, all of your friends and family, everyone around you, um, other than my husband, um, going against the grain is really difficult and questioning um, that, that belief for me is quite difficult. So it's really something you kind of, I had my blinkers on and I didn't want to look in the other I didn't want to look at Islam, but at the same time, when it comes to Judgment Day, I realized it's just going to be between me and God. When when it's my Judgment Day, I can't say, yeah, but everyone else said um, it's not acceptable to God that he's, he's, he's requesting us all to read and learn and find out for ourselves. So I just could not ignore it. On the on, on 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 the basis of of um, I just couldn't ignore that I really couldn't ignore it and so I asked that day for my husband to get me a Quran so that I could read it for myself at this stage no I did not want to convert I wanted to read it and find all of the errors find all the loopholes point it all out um, and you know show him how 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 wrong it was and and maybe get him to convert over to the Catholic um, but yeah I really wanted to to find the errors but at the same st at the same time I also needed to read it to rule it out um, you know maybe it was really the Holy Spirit that they're talking about but I need to I need to rule it out I need to just cross that off the off the list because it's my due diligence to to make sure that if I'm committing to a faith um, and committing to God that I'm a hundred percent there that is why I started to read it and um, when I started reading it I realized that like the, to start with it was really confronting because they talk about hell a lot we believe in heaven and hell um, in Catholic like this it's not a new concept for me but I've never seen it written about so descriptively and when I say descriptively it's descriptive it's actually scary um, and it really put me off I, I, I said to my husband I, I can't read this it's too it's too strong it's very confronting and he said to me that you know hell it, it's not a joke it's not a joke and this is his last warning so God needs to know that you really understand your choices that you're making um, how it's going to work out when it comes to your judgment day and that you you know that he's quite serious when it comes to heaven and hell there is no second chance draw there's no look you got most of it right but you know it, it's it, it's heaven and it's hell so he needs to make sure that yeah you're, you're really aware of what hell would be like so all throughout the Quran you will find that on a constant thing um, about going to hell and it's um, 
it, it, it is it is quite confronting for someone that is not used to seeing that. So that was one of the first things that I had to, to digest. Um, is it talking about hell because it's trying to scare us? <laughs> um, I think it's fair enough. I think that um, we do believe heaven, as, as a Catholic, we believe in heaven and hell. But have we become to um, to just, you know, yeah, it, oh yeah, um, have we become too laxy daisy with, with the concept of hell? Um, and I think that the, the Quran has made it quite clear. Um, it obviously also talks about paradise and heaven and all of the wonderful things, of course. Um, but that was the first thing that, that really sort of stood out to me. Um, knowing how respected Jesus is in the um, and, and Mary in, in the Bible, in, in the Quran, um, was obviously really good for me. Like I, that was one of the things I sort of flipped to all the pages first on, on Jesus to, to understand his position and what they thought of him. Um, and everything that they said about um, Jesus really made sense to me. There was a lot of things in um, the Catholic teachings that didn't make sense to me. Um, it, it, it was it was always a little bit grey. I find the Quran, I'm an accountant, so I like things black and white, and I actually found the Quran beautifully black and white, which just made everything easily fall into place. There wasn't this um, language that, if, it was nice and clear, say it that way. Um, the... What I, what I discovered is the, um, and, and I guess the way that it helped me understand it, is that God has created, obviously, created Adam and Eve. Um, he created heaven and hell and, and all that's in between. Um, he has created us. Um, there's a wonderful um, talk by, um, and I've put it on my channel, um, The Purpose of Life. And it's a really, really amazing talk, and, and I really do um, encourage you to watch that link, um, The Purpose of Life. Um, but for me, they, they, the way I understand it now, being being um, obviously brought up Catholic, is, is you know, the, the, Jew, the Jews and um, Moses, and they, they had the Ten Commandments, and then after that came Jesus, who brought the Bible, and it sort of seemed to have stopped there for a lot of, you know, the, the Catholics and Christians. But Islam, it's it's all three. It's that evolution. So all of those um, prophets and all of the teachings are all the same. Um, there is just new information in there in terms of um, the best best practices, in terms of how to worship God and how to show him that you are a good person. Um, and that you are there to worship him. But it is the same God. Um, it's not a totally different God at all. Um, one of the things that I needed when I was reading the Quran, because as I mentioned, it's a big jump um, across um, to, to be a Muslim when you have these um, feelings towards it to start with. Um, uh, there was actually a lot of scientific facts in the Quran. Um, I'm not very good at science, but simple, simple little things in there, like he might have phrased when he talks about clouds, he talked them talked about the clouds as heavy clouds. Um, well, Google how how heavy is a cloud. Um, you would think that cloud is just it's light as a cloud, light as a feather. Um, no, it's not true. God has talked about them as, as heavy clouds. Um, in the Quran, he has given us many scientific revelations to prove to us. So as humans, we lack a little bit of proof. And God has said, you want proof? Here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you about these um, things and how they were actually created. How can I do that? Because I'm God. I'm the one that actually created it to start with. Um, so... People that say, oh, Muhammad created this um, this religion just for himself and just for the Arabs. Um, how could he have known, you know, how to detail the, um, the creation of an embryo is in there? 
the um, creation of the embryo is detailed in the Quran. This is information that we've only just discovered a couple of hundred years ago or hundred years ago um, with the technological advances of, of, of science and technology. So it wasn't around for some guy to know. Um, there are constant little proofs from from God in the Quran to show us I, this is God talking to you. What else do I have to do to, to show you and to tell you that this is God talking to you? And it was really important for me to see those those links. Um, and there were there were there were a lot. And if you you Google about um, there's a, a website and um, I'll put the link on my um, channel as well. It's called There Is No Clash, and they really talk about um, a lot of the Big Bang theory, the stardust. Um, there, there's so much on there that that just shows to us um, these these phrases in the Quran and then what they mean when you look a li look a little bit into that. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's really amazing and then seeing that okay wow like this this is um it, it it is incredible it is absolutely incredible when you actually do read it so in terms of converting i think for me when i had these links of okay there's scientific proofs in there for me um so there's that sort of security blanket that i kind of needed to know um that that, that this is true it's it's not not um it's not just trying to win me over for, for no reason. The other thing that was actually important for me, um, Muhammad, peace be upon him, over and over and over again in the Quran, he says that I am not to be worshipped. I am not here sending out these messages for any gain. I don't want anything. Please don't worship me. You you won't find in in with with Muslims in 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 their mosques. You won't find any statues and 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 pictures of Muhammad. Because he has said over and over, do not worship me. The only one that should be worshipped is God. He has asked for nothing. He has not asked for wages. He has not asked for, um, you know, the, the Muslims don't have any um, direct debit system to be a Muslim. You have to start paying to, the, to a church or to a hierarchy or any of these things. It's just between you and God. He says, God is your judge, not me. I, I am not your judge. It's it's just for God. My, I've been asked to, to convey his words to you. That's my duty and that's what I will do. What you do with these words that he has given, that's up to you. And that was really a, a really important um, surah in, 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 the, in the Quran for me. When he says, I've given you the words, that's my job. So... I know with my Lord, I've I've done my job properly. I've I've given these words out. I've written them down, and I've 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 delivered the message. Um, what you do with the words, if you want to follow them, that's up to you. So, um, yeah, that that was something really for me for me to think on. Um, and over time, um, as I um, read the Quran, was reading the Quran, I realized my heart had changed from this questioning and from this disbelief and um, really wanting to find all the loopholes. It really changed into just excitement and joy and I couldn't wait to read again. Um, I, was, I had just fallen in love uh, because everything was so beautifully aligned. Everything made perfect sense to me. Um, and I was I was so grateful um, to finally understand religion um, a little bit, but to finally understand religion really, um, and for it to harmonise and sing with me was it's it's an incredible feeling. Um, so I did then have to have the conversation with my priest. Um, as I mentioned, I was on the parish finance committee, and I cannot be on the committee if I am not Catholic. So I actually had to sit down with him. Um, I couldn't just stop going. Um, to church and no one would notice so that made it a little bit more challenging um, and um, I have so much respect for for my priest he's he's such a, a wonderful wonderful man um, and you know of course he said look I'm I'm, I'm not gonna lie I'm not happy <laughs> I don't want you to go um, but you know your journey is your journey he said look I said look it's it's the same it's the same God we're, we're still you know, it's the same God. And he said, yes, but there are some very key differences. Um, I said, okay, well, what's the key differences that are your concerns? 
And he said the role of Jesus. You know, we believe that Jesus is God, is God. Um, and I said, okay, okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my belief from when I was younger was always that Jesus was sent by God. I always believed that Jesus was there to, to teach us about God in heaven. Not He didn't come saying, worship me. He came saying, worship, worship God. Um, so for me, I, I was comfortable with my beliefs um, on, on that topic. Um, so respectfully I said okay and, and, and what's the other concern and his other concern was um, the sacrament of reconciliation um, so that forgiveness of your sins so for um, for Muslims um, every single time we pray which is five times a day we ask for forgiveness for our sins um, God says that he is only the only one who can forgive you for your sins no one else has the right to forgive you. It's, it's up to God. Um, so the reconciliation or, or forgiveness, 100% we have, we have forgiveness for our sins and we ask God every day. Um, but we do believe that that forgiveness and you've got that direct communication um, with God when you're praying. Um, it's directly between you and God. He is the hearer, the all-hearer, the all-seer, the all-knower. He is the he knows the seen and the unseen. Now that's really important that comment to me, and that's something we say every week in church. Um, knows the seen and the unseen, um, and we say it when we pray um, as well as, as Muslims. Um, he he is the seen and the unseen, and that is really important to me for reconciliation. Unseen it means what's in my heart, what's in my head. He knows what I'm really thinking. And that to me is why God should be the only one to forgive anybody. Um, because he knows if that person is truly sorry. Um, he knows how, how how they're feeling and if they're actually really repenting or if they're just saying it. Um, so um, those were the main, main two elements um, that my priest brought up. My parents was a different story. Um, <laughs> they were adamant that I am not wearing the burqa. Mum says, oh, but it's so hot. How do they wear the burqa? It's so hot. Um, <laughs> that's very funny. Um, so, yeah, my, my parents are still um, not understanding. And, and I really enjoyed the chat with my priest because he at least uh, he, he, understands, um, he understands Islam. And so he was able to... To talk to me about those points um, whereas my parents they still don't really understand Islam sorry guys but you don't really um, so yeah they they were very welcoming and, and of course they love me no matter what um, but I think that the thought of being a Muslim and, and wearing a, a hijab is too much for them right now <laughs> um, but overall you know as I mentioned originally, when we spoke about the the religion, they didn't know who was God um, in in Islam. So for them to know that um, it is the same God, um, and they believe that there are many paths that lead to God. So so we're we're happy there. We're happy there. Um, but yeah, Dad's very much the same as me when I was with my husband, and I was saying, "This is my lane, and that's yours." You know, you stay as a Muslim, and I'll stay as Catholic. Um, so yeah, I was giggling to my husband because I was like, "My dad's giving me exactly the same that you gave me, that I gave you." Um, so I guess um, the Shahada. So that's the declaration. How do you actually convert to Islam? Is there a big ceremony and these sorts of things? No. Um, it's the beautiful thing about the religion is it's literally just between you and God. Um, so there's a declaration, a shahada that you make that, that you declare that there is only one God to worship and that Muhammad was his messenger. And, and, um, and by declaring Muhammad is his messenger, it means that, that we believe in the Quran. Um, so I was on holiday with my husband and um, we decided, I, I decided, <laughs> I decided um, that I was ready to, to take um, to take my oath, and um, it was a little bit funny because my husband was like, "Oh, now you know, they do say that um, when you take the shahada, you'll <laughs> you 
<laughs> you'll cry. <laughs> you know, so much joy, tears of joy. <laughs> so he was looking at me waiting for me to cry. <laughs> and I was like, no, okay. All right. Um, and um, and then we were getting dressed to go out and um, and he was off with the kids uh, in the in the lounge room and I was I was um, still getting ready in, in my room and I just cried. It just it just came out. Um, it was really overwhelming and it's really difficult to describe. It's something that, um, and I mention this because a lot of the Muslims want to enjoy knowing about this rather than the Aussies probably don't quite understand and don't quite get it, but the Muslims, they, they always want to know, you know, how, how did that go, um, which is why I'm talking about it. Um, it, was, it was very overwhelming and very emotional and in, I, I'm... Other than stress, I'm not normally an emotional. I'm generally quite a happy person. So um, to be crying and not knowing why, um, but at the same time knowing why, it's very difficult to explain, but it's, it's, it's like having this big, huge, gigantic bear cuddle that just says, I've got you. Um, and that cuddle is, you know, it's just it fixes every problem. That's... A cuddle from God basically that just all of the problems just disappeared and there was just he just says I've got you you know it was it was really overwhelming um, so you know they do say that, that when you convert all of your um, prior sins they're, they're all forgiven you start brand new um, like a baby brand new no sins um, so it's 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 yeah it's it's really overwhelming. It was it was it was wonderful. Something I really didn't. No one could tell me that that was going to happen. No one could you know when when people tell you something like that's going to happen to you and you know my husband's saying you're going to cry now. <laughs> no, I'm not going to cry. I'm fine. Um, so yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, so I, I think in a nutshell, um, I would also like to, as I mentioned, my point for making the video is to just open that, that door a little bit. There is so much to talk about when it comes to um, to Islam and, and to a journey of changing teams. Um, so I'd like to welcome anyone that actually wants to ask me questions to email me through. I'll put my um, email address um, available so that you can see it in the comments. Um, email me through your questions, um, whether they've got questions for me and my journey, questions that you've got for you that are important to your journey. I am still new to Islam. I am still um, learning as well. Um, so if I don't know the answer, I certainly won't just give an answer. If I can't find a Quran that relates to it in the in the uh, a reading that relates to that, or um, but I just want you know I w I won't answer it un unless I really know how to answer it um, properly um, and in the right light. Because as, as I said, I, I am quite new, but I, I can at least as well um, guide you to places that are, and people that are more knowledgeable than I am. Um, but I'm here for people who have questions that are really of the same sort of, you know, they they have no idea about his name, just um, and want to sort of just ask questions without feeling like someone's going to try and convert you. Um, um, that's not my purpose, and, and and the Quran tells everyone. You know, my my husband would have tried to convert me ages ago, um, but he had no chance. It wasn't until I was ready. So. Um, there is no way to convert anyone, so please, if you ask me a question, please don't think I'm trying to convert you because it's not my job to convert you, but I really want to open that door so that you don't feel like Islam is just for the Muslims. It is for everybody. Um, I think Bali is like the biggest Muslim country. Um, we love Bali, and um, I think it's like the highest Muslim population in um, any of the countries in the world. So... Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of um, prejudices to, that we can smash out here. Um, so, yeah, um, send me through any questions that you have. And, um, yeah, it was really nice. I hope you enjoyed um, my chat. Um, if you want to, this is what the English one um, that I'm reading. That's what it looks like. Um, <laughs> but, anyway, thank you very much. And I will see you soon. Bye.